Hi guys! Today we're going to be doing a big ol' unhaul. Starting to run out of room on my bookshelves again, so it was time for a purge. There's also a couple in here that were from my TBR shelf, which I rarely do. I do try to give books a chance if I've already purchased them especially, but these ones have been on my shelf for so long and I've just completely lost interest. So I figured I'd pass them along and hopefully someone who is really excited about them will get a good deal on them. So we're gonna start off with some romances. They're just at the top of the pile. This isn't really organized in any sensible way, but we're gonna start with My Favorite Half Night Stand by Christina Lauren. Christina Lauren is so hit or miss for me. When they hit, they're like five stars. The last book I read by them, which was Love in Other Words, literally made me weep at 2 a.m. on my couch. Like five star read, it was so good. So I was really excited to pick up another one by them. But honestly, I don't even know why I purchased this one. It has a trope that I really don't like, which is catfishing. I got like 75% of the way through this and I was just getting so frustrated with everyone. But the main character was just like unforgivable in my opinion so I just I don't like the idea of manipulating someone you care about that was just really frustrating to read and so I decided to DNF this because this was literally stressing me out like I was having a hard time sleeping because I was so worked up reading this book so I was just like nope gonna get rid of this from what I've heard this isn't like one of their top tier books anyways so guess I'm not super surprised, but I'm hoping that their next release isn't quite so frustrating. I don't know when this one came out, but it's definitely not their newest one. This was like a backlist one that I'd picked up because I was going through a bit of a Christina Lauren kick. And again, I should have read the premise a bit closer because I think if I had known that there was catfishing going on, I wouldn't have picked this up. So that was on me. And we have a couple sort of seasonal romances, and that is Payback's a Witch and The Ex Hex. These are cute. They're fun. They're good, like autumnal reads. They both, I think, take place around Halloween, but they just didn't land super hard for me. Like they were fun while I was reading them, but I don't think about them very much. They're not comfort reads for me. Yeah, I don't know. Especially The Ex Hex, I thought was kind of boring. I didn't really feel invested in the main romance, which is like, you pick up a romance to feel invested in the romance and the context is just, you know, for fun. But yeah, that one was boring. And then Paybacks of Witch I liked better. This is a sapphic romance, so I liked that, but it felt more about like this competition element that was happening in the town which was entertaining, but again, I just wasn't quite as invested in the main couple as I was hoping to be. So I'm gonna pass these two along and hopefully someone around Halloween will find these and have fun. Then we have Twice Shy by Sarah Hogle. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed about this one because I did pick it up earlier this year with really high expectations. I've heard amazing things about this book, but I don't know. I This is one of those ones, I don't know how to explain why it didn't land for me other than it just didn't. I did listen to this on audiobook to start and I really was not vibing with the narrator. So maybe that kind of colored my opinion of it. This one is sort of an enemies to lovers situation in which the main character Maybelle inherits a dilapidated but high potential <laughs> estate from her great aunt. When she comes to move in, she finds out that it's in a really rough state and that she's also co-inherited it with another guy, Wesley, who is like the groundskeeper. And they really butt heads at first, but their visions for the place come together in a really cute way. And this was a cute like situation. Again, I just, I, it didn't hit me very hard and I don't find myself thinking about it very much. And it was just a three-star read for me. So gonna pass this one along as well. <laughs> I don't know why I bought the physical copy of this one. This is like, I should have just kept it on my Kindle. A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair. This is a Hades Persephone retelling. Not a very good one in my opinion, but like I had fun with it. It's very poorly written. I really actively disliked the way Scarlett St. Clair wrote Persephone, especially in this book. She was infuriating and just like so quick to jump to the worst assumptions about Hades. And I also, I don't like the fact that he's literally ancient and she's like 20. That gives me the ick. But this is a popular retelling. Like 
I don't know. I, I'm in the minority, I think, here, but I just, I didn't quite love this one. It was fun, like, while I read it, but I'm never going to read it again. I'm not going to continue the series because I didn't like Scar Scarlet St. Clair's writing, and I um just going to just gonna get rid of this one. <laughs> Not worth holding on to. Then we have Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I'm actually a big fan of Taylor Jenkins Reid, but I kind of prefer her more like historical fiction. This is an earlier work of hers, like pre Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones. The nature of this book, I think, is why I picked it up because I thought it sounded interesting, but because of the way it's structured, I really only actively super enjoyed one half of this book. <laughs> this one follows a girl named Hannah, and follows sort of two different realities diverging from a point in the night where she decides to either go home with an old flame or not. And you bounce back and forth between these different timelines and see how her life unfolds, depending on, you know, whether or not she decided to go home with this guy. And it was interesting. I liked the concept and I thought it was a really fun thing for an author to explore. Like, I imagine it was a lot of fun to write. But again, due to the nature of it, I feel like you end up liking one storyline over the other. And at least I did. And so I didn't love the other storyline as much and wasn't as actively engaged with that. Plus, you have a couple events that play out in both timelines, but like during different parts of the narrative. So it starts to feel a little repetitive after a while. And it just wasn't my favorite. I do still want to explore some of her other backlist works. I think she actually just got them all republished, like with different covers and stuff that all kind of match each other. So I might pick up some of those, but this one just like wasn't my favorite and I gotta, I gotta make some room on my shelves. So this was a tough one to decide to let go of, but ultimately it's just not my favorite Taylor Jenkins read. Don't get mad at this next one, but I'm unhauling the paperback version of The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, but because I found a hardcover version and I'm replacing it. So I upgraded my version. I do actually really love this book. It's very atmospheric. Erin Morgenstern's writing is gorgeous. It focuses on two sort of rival magicians, but their rivalry isn't, I think, what a lot of people expect when they pick up this book, but I ultimately really enjoyed that part about it. We follow, I, th I think, um, Celia and Marco, right? So they're raised by two magicians who kind of create like a game or a bet, basically, that their protege will be better than the other one. And the setting for this competition is the Night Circus. And Celia and Marco basically create these attractions. Yeah, it's, again, very atmospheric. You pick it up for the vibes, not so much the plot. The romance is quite slow burn, but I really enjoyed that as well. I do love this book, so I was really excited to find a hardback version used for a really good price. So I snatched that up and I will be passing along the paperback. So this next one is one that was on my TBR shelf. I haven't read it, but I've just, I've lost interest. The urge has passed to read this, and that is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. I picked up The Great Alone by her, I think it was late last year, and it was fine. I was invested as I was reading it, but I started to get really frustrated because it just felt like trauma porn at a certain point. From what I've heard about The Nightingale, I think I would be similarly frustrated. This takes place during World War II and it follows two sisters whose journeys I think diverge from one another and I'm just kind of over World War II fiction unless there's like something really unique about it and I have heard this is a well-written story. I, I'm just kind of over Kristen Hanna. <laughs> I think I'll probably check out the movie when it comes out because it has Dakota and Elle Fanning who are real life sisters and I like both of them so I'll check out the movie but I just I don't have the time or the energy for this this chonker anymore and I got it for a pretty good deal used so I'm not gonna be too upset over the fact that I've decided not to read it. So hopefully someone else gets a good deal on it. Similarly to The Night Circus, I found a hardback copy of A Witch in Time by Constance Sayers and I didn't even know this book was published in hardcover. I picked it up new paperback but I don't think I've ever seen it in hardcover so when I did find it used I was like oh crap! So I, I grabbed that and I will be unhauling the paperback. This kind of gives me Addie LaRue vibes. If you liked that, I definitely suggest you pick this one up because it has that sort of, she's not immortal, but she's kind of cursed to be reincarnated with a lover who spurned her. And there's also a demon 
involved, named Luke, which is funny. And or it's funny if you've read Addie LaRue, at least. So yeah, very similar vibes. And this has like a historical fiction aspect as well as a fantasy aspect because you're following this character who has been reincarnated through, you know, several different really interesting time periods. So I really liked that element about it. I do want to reread it at some point because again, just the vibes were awesome. And I think it will benefit from a reread even more like the first read through was enjoyable but I think going back and rereading it knowing how it ends it will be even more satisfying really excited to find the hardcover and once again we'll be passing along the paperback next up we have interior Chinatown by Charles Yu this was good I just don't see myself rereading this yeah I just gotta make room on my shelves some some of the some of the cuts are harder than others this is a book that is basically about the Asian American experience but told in a movie script kind of format which is really interesting and I like the way Charles Yu plays with Asian tropes in film and television but like in a literary setting. We follow this character who begins as generic Asian man and as he goes through life sort of adopts these different sort of Asian stereotypes like kung fu dad or special guest star. Again I thought it was a really interesting way to explore the Asian American experience and I did really enjoy it. It was a really fast read because it's set up like a movie script. I don't see myself rereading it anytime soon and just passing it along. This next one hurts. Um, this was a really anticipated read for me for 2022. though. So it was a recent purchase by an author that I've previously really quite enjoyed and that is Weather Girl by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This book just wasn't what I wanted it to be, but it wasn't bad. It has a really heavy focus on mental health and depression specifically, and I think that's a really important conversation, but I was really excited to pick this up. One, for the romance, which I wasn't quite as invested in as I wanted to be, and two, for the setting. I used to work in television news, and I was really excited to see that this book follows a TV meteorologist and I was just kind of hoping for more in that setting but that's really like not as explored kind of as much as it, a sort of similar setting was in her other book The X Talk. I really liked the way that she approached working in radio news in that book and I was hoping for sort of something similar from this book but they really don't talk much about their jobs and whatnot beyond just being sort of a place for these two characters to meet. So, I don't know, that was kind of disappointing for me. <laughs> it was just fine. I think I gave this three stars, so I'm just trying to, like, let go of books that aren't, like, favorites, you know, especially with my limited space. So, passing this one along. These next two are also from my TBR shelf, and they are The Wrath and the Dawn and The Rose and the Dagger. I picked these up super cheap at my local bookstore, and I'm not, like, not interested in reading these anymore, but these aren't, like, the versions that I want. I prefer the hardcover where it has more of like a pattern on the front. It's really cool looking. It's like these covers just don't do much for me. And there's also a comic adaptation on Webtoon that I started to read and I quite enjoyed it in that format. So I think I'm actually going to continue reading it as a comic. And if I really like it, I'll pick up the hardcovers. I just don't see myself reading these anytime soon. They're just taking up room on my TBR shelf. So I figured it's time for them to go. Oh, and these are, I believe, a retelling from like of A Thousand and One Nights sort of framework, I think, for that. The Shahrazad telling her story stories to the Sultan. Yeah, so getting rid of these, though. Another one from the TBR shelf. This one has been on my shelf for a very long time. And again, just I've my interest in it has waned. I have heard really mixed things about this book. I've heard it has a strong start, but gets boring. I've heard people who like the first book don't even care for the second or third books very much. So I'm like, what's the point? I'm not even gonna bother at this point anymore. And that is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. At this point, this has been adapted into a TV show. And if I do wanna check it out, I'll probably just watch the show. I've heard it's a good adaptation, so. Uh, this is kind of, I think, like dark academia and a romance between a witch and a vampire, and they're like not supposed to interact at all, much less fall in love. So you have a forbidden romance element as well. It reads, I think, from what I've heard, as very like scholarly. Deborah Harkness is like a researcher or something. She she is like a scholar. I've heard it definitely reads that way. And then it's very slow paced. And while I don't mind a slow paced book, I've had a hard time wanting to pick this up and I think it's just time to let it go. So this one hurts, but gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. 
This next one was actually kind of a more recent-ish read and part of my project to clear up my Goodreads want to read backlist. I've owned this for a really long time. I think I picked it up for like four dollars. So again, not too upset about letting this one go, but that is The Husband's Secret by Leanne Moriarty. This was fine. It kind of all centers on a letter that this woman finds written from her husband addressed to her to be opened upon his death. And obviously she doesn't wait until he dies to read the letter. <laughs> and the contents of the letter impacts several people in the community, including her, obviously. So it was fine. I think I've just kind of outgrown Leanne Moriarty. I really liked Big Little Lies. And the television adaptation for that was excellent. But every book I've picked up from her since then just like hasn't hit quite as well. Like I think I started with her best. And <laughs> so every fo one following has been kind of disappointing. And I think I'm just at the point where I'm not interested in her books anymore. I'm breaking up with this author and unhauling the last of her books that I own. <laughs> The only nonfiction book on this list is Stay Sexy and Don't Get Murdered by Karen Kilgariff and Georgia Hardstark. They are the hosts of My Favorite Murder, the podcast. It's really big. I went through a phase where I was like very into this podcast. So I picked this one up when I found it used. It read like their podcast sounds. I don't know. Like I feel like I didn't gain much from reading this book that I didn't already know about having listened to the podcast. So it was fine, but like didn't change my life. And I have kind of fallen off of this podcast. It's not something I listen to really anymore. Not because I think it's bad or anything. I've just sort of lost interest in true crime. Not entirely, but I just, you get to a certain point where like things in reality are so bad. You don't need the extra reminders, I guess. So I'm letting this one go. And finally, we have Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. This is one of his really popular ones, but it just didn't really land with me quite as much as Home Before Dark did. I even liked Survive the Night better than this one, which is an incredibly unpopular opinion, but oh well. This one follows a girl named Jules who she's really desperate for a job and she finds this listing to basically apartment sit in this really swanky building in New York City. Like, I think it overlooks Central Park. It's something that she would never be able to afford to rent herself, but she's being offered like a crazy amount of money just to apartment sit. But there's a lot of stipulations, like she can't have any visitors. She has to spend the night there. Like she's not allowed to not be there um, overnight. At first she's like, that's fine, whatever. But like, as she occupies the space, weird things are going on and she's getting really weird vibes. The residents are super weird. She's not supposed to talk to them, but like there's several instances in which like she can't not. So it was fine. Ultimately, I liked where it went. I thought that was interesting, but like the journey there just felt a little like meh. So Getting rid of this one, again, just kind of desperate for shelf space at this point. I think normally I'd hold on to it because I didn't dislike it and I have people that I would like loan this out to, but at this point, I think I actually have a coworker who will really enjoy this, so I'm just gonna give this to her. <laughs> All right, and that wraps up my unhaul. Probably not as big as it should be considering how much I have hauled lately, but the cuts get harder and harder because I feel like I'm really, I'm weeding my collection down to like my very favorites and so it's just it's getting harder to let them go because i don't want to get rid of books but i'm very pressed for space so hopefully just me talking about these has maybe piqued some interest for you or maybe it's just cathartic for you to watch unhauls who knows whatever let me know down in the comments if you've read any of those books what did you think about them did you not really vibe with them as well let me know and as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Please feel free to follow my socials down in the description box below. Like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate that and have a lovely day. Bye.